I'm Andrew Jenkinson, the UK's top caravan historian. And I've just written recently a book on Sprite caravans. And I want to tell you about Sprite, how they've been innovative, and how they've really shaped the industry as it is today. Back in 1948, Sam and Henry Alper had a small business producing caravans. These caravans were quite expensive, they were about £600, and also they were pretty heavy. After the war years, the, the country was desperate to have some good leisure time. And the caravan was an ideal way of spending that leisure time. So what Sam did, he actually decided to set about producing a cheap, affordable caravan, but it would be robust as well. And put his first caravan out at £199. The dealers said, we love the van. It's great, it's a great price point, but unfortunately, Sam, it's not gonna last. He realized he'd have to prove this caravan was durable. So the chance came in the mid fifties to enter the Mediterranean Dash. And Sam took one of his sprites with a team of two other people, one of them a caravan journalist called Martin Lumby, and one of his, his factory personnel, and off they went. And they did it in several days, 10,000 miles. And on the way, what Sam did, he actually stopped at places and sold his caravan. He actually built up an export market. The Sprite came out unhurt. He got back, he won the cup, and that gave Sprite completely the street cred that he needed. He produced more models, he did more durability runs. He basically brought caravan in to the masses. But what Sam also realised was his company was expanding at such a rate that he would need more investment. And it was this time that Bill Riley, who owned a company called Ethel's Caravans, who'd, who'd basically invented the touring caravan, decided that he was going to retire. And the Ethel's name, he didn't want to see go. So he approached Sam Alper and asked him, would he be interested in taking the Ethel's name on with Sprite? So in 1960, Sam bought Ethel's. But also, because he was expanding at such a great knot, he decided that the other thing would be to do would be to do a merger. And in 1963, he was in talks with a company called Bluebird Carons, who were based at Poole in Dorset. The two merged, with Sam Alpa being the chairman, and they decided to call this new company Caravans International. And it would become a major force in the UK, in Europe, and also in the rest of the world. By the time the end of the 60s came, the Sprite Alpine, which was a 12 foot 6, four berth touring caravan, was the top selling caravan in the UK, with sales of 6,000 units. Sam decided that all his dealers selling Sprite and Ethels and Bluebirds by this time had to have a spares backup, whether it was in the UK or in Europe. So what he tried to do was emulate the car industry. So if you had a Sprite and something went wrong with it, out in France, you just went to your Sprite dealer in France and you got your part, it was not a problem. The next decade, the 1970s, was gonna be a different story for Sprite. His caravans now were being produced in Italy, Germany, South Africa, New Zealand. But also, Sam, as everybody wants to do in business or show business, wants to conquer the States. And he decided the best way to do that was to buy an existing company. He decided to produce his Alpine, his 400 major musketeer, to the US regulations and thought he could emulate the success there, as he'd done in the rest of the world. Why not? But unfortunately, that didn't quite happen. By 1972-73, things were looking a little bit dodgy. Although Sam predicted at one of his, his meetings to the shareholders that things were going to turn the corner. Problem was, he'd got a lot of home competition as well as competition from abroad. Sprite was starting to lose its market share to another company called ABI Carons, to its Monza brand and several other manufacturers at that time. The export markets were drying up. The recession was coming in in the late 70s. They were producing far too many Carons for too few customers. Things were starting to look shaky. The 80s would be a final chapter in Sam's involvement in Sprite, but then a new chapter would begin. By the 1980s, things had come to a bit of a crunch. In late 1982, the parent company CI Caravans went into liquidation. It was a major shock in the industry, but the Sprite brand came back. Not only was it durable as a caravan, but it was durable as a brand, and a new CI was born. It was a lot smaller, but and more efficient, and the emphasis was on more quality. But Sam was no longer involved. It was a new breed of management in there. And we had a new company called Sprite Leisure. 
and they produce things like tower and safety demands, the standard and the sprites, loose fit carpets, halogen lamps in the caravans. They were far ahead. So it was still taking on that innovative part of the Sprite brand. And the Sprite name was then now under the Swift umbrella. Unfortunately, some years later, the Sprite brand was dropped in the UK only and was made for the European market. But a few years later, in 2005, Swift realised that the Sprite brand was a very, very strong and had a loyal following to it. Now, all these years on, the Sprite brand is again a leader in its entry-level market. For instance, the 2013 range has got to be the best that Sprite have probably produced in all the years. The Sprite Major 4 Berth has won awards. The Sprite brand is still carrying on what Sam had originally started off. Value for money with durability and reliability. Sprite is its 65th anniversary and still going strong. I'm Stuart Craig, I'm the Marketing Manager for Shield Total Insurance. We love Sprite caravans and we can insure any caravan of any age from only £48. We also particularly like the current Sprite model because they're the only entry level caravan to fit the post theft recovery system as standard.